Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashrathi, and this is the Eve Universe Show's continued coverage of the CSM 16 with our interviews, this time with Bacallus. How are you doing, Bacallus? I'm doing good. Uh, thank you so much for having me. How are you doing? And and just to clarify, it, it, it's uh, Baculus, but no one ever says it right, so it's totally fine. Baculus. Ba ba Baculus? Yep. Okay, good. Well, I, I, I claim dyslexia. I'm bad at names. It's kind of a shtick, but uh, I will do my best. Um, but okay, so uh, yeah, how are you doing, first and foremost? You doing good? Yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm having a, a great day. It's it's really nice out. Not too hot. Uh, nothing has exploded in my apartment yet, which is a nice change. Well, you you uh you kind of got me off track right at the very beginning, but we will get back on track by explaining the rules. I have 50 minutes to explore the candidacy with the candidate. I have their post in front of me, so that way I can make reference to it and show it to you guys as we go through it. Uh. After I take 50 minutes, then the candidate gets a 10-minute warning where they can bring up anything that they feel I may have missed, uh, hit any final points, make a final presentation, whatever, and uh, then we will wrap it up, send it over to my YouTube where it goes into the playlist where you can watch them all so that way you can be well-informed because that's the most important thing, having a well-informed electorate that makes a, an effective CP, CSM, which is a powerful tool for the players and only as powerful as we make it. So with that in mind, Bakulis, what is your history with the CSM, first and foremost? So my history with the CSM itself is really limited, I would say, like most players. Um, if you haven't been on the CSM uh, or been in like a major null block, you probably haven't had too much opportunity to interact with people. Um, and then those players traditionally from the null blocks that make it onto the CSM tend to be directors. I think, I think brisk might be an exception there. Um, so, uh, I followed the CSM, um, the last time I played really heavily before coming back last year, uh, Jinton was doing the CSM minutes and there were, you know, frequent posts about the CSM and the content of, of what was going on, you know, within the scope of the NDA. So that's uh, largely been my background. I know the history of the CSM from the original, I guess, T20 debacle um, through to, for instance, Mittens uh, getting kicked off the CSM. Um, and and it's, I've followed it as an EVE player, but it wasn't something that I really saw as, um, eff as effective as it could have been. And so I had just kind of like ignored it until uh, I think the current state of the game sort of really, it wrote me in, it caught my attention. And I was like, no, this is where we need advocates from every walk of life uh, to represent players to CCP. Was it, is this your first time running for CSM then? This is my very first run for CSM. Okay. Because you're pretty, you're not an unknown figure. So, so you, you, You'd excuse me if I thought that it was possible that you had run or been on it before. I, I've actually gotten that before, but uh, no, this is my first time. Mostly I've just been, uh, you know, like uh, someone who posts about Eve, right. uh, which I guess is where most of my name recognition comes from. Also, probably just a certain amount of like people generally assume that Goonswarm has like all these people in. Uh, in the CSM and all the important people are in it. And so maybe they just don't think it all the way through uh, yet. And to that end though, there's a lot of people uh, running for Goon, uh, for Goon Swarm or the Imperium rather um, this year, several. Um, and I've talked to quite a few of the Karma Fleet guys asking about why there's so many people in Karma Fleet. But when I was putting your name together on here, you're not, you're not, you're not in Karma Fleet. Are you the only one representing the true goon? Uh, it looks like I am the only true goon that is running, yeah. Um, I did do uh, some time with Karma Fleet, and they're great guys. Uh, but I'm a something awful poster. That's how I got into goons originally. Um, and so I'm back in Wafa. And uh, I think my big support base, most of them are goon Wafa players. Um, Karma Fleet, we have kind of uh, been bringing over some of them, some of the very good posters into Goonwafa. 
But uh, yeah, true goon through and through. Well, if you speak to them, they say like the the reason why it is the way it is is that like so many of the people have just moved over to Karma Fleet because that's the place to be. Almost as if like Goonwafa is this like place for has beens and whatnot. Uh, uh, I I assume that you don't believe that that's true, and I'm not trying to cre- create like inner Imperium drama here, but like. Um, uh, does your does your position in Gunwaf change how you would be as a candidate compared to these uh, Karma Fleet uh, candidates who maybe focus more on the training or new bro or you know aspect of things? Uh, so first of all, uh, it it is. I mean, yeah, they do say that like people move over to Karma Fleet, it's more active. Uh, I think the recent war has changed that. Uh, Goonwafa is a lot more active now than it was for probably the last five or six years. Um, and part of that has to do with Delta Squad. Like, rather than um, the Goonwafa candidate, I kind of consider myself the Delta Squad candidate. Uh, Delta Squad is here in chat, I think, at least some of us. Um, we're uh, like a special interest group in the Imperium, uh, much like Theta Squad, only, you know, cooler. Um, and we have like Karma Fleet members in our group. Uh, so, you know, the only restriction is basically that you're a member of the Imperium, uh, to be in Delta Squad. Uh, but as far as like, is Goonwafa a bit of like an old man's retirement home? Kind of, uh, with some of the older players, but there's a lot of, you know, fresh blood that's come in from the new war and the Horn of Goondor and everything. Um, and what we're emphasizing is posting, getting back to posting, getting back to believing, making sure that you're having fun and that you're, you know, making people laugh when you're playing this game. Um, and so we've attracted a lot of Karma Fleet members, actually. Got it. OK, well, thank you for exploring that. Like I said, I didn't want to I wasn't trying to, like, pull, like, cause disruption among the hive. Uh, I think that what you guys are doing really cool. It's just hard to understand sometimes from an outside perspective um that being said you keep saying that so you represent delta squad um i i always assume that the big blocks imperium in particular pretty much have their voting figured out right like they have their ballot you know all that sort of stuff so imperium candidates get voted by imperium people based on how the imperium tell them to so that's not why you're here you're not talking to those people they're going to vote that way Uh, presumably you're talking to the people that may not vote block or be part of a different group, or maybe not even related to these NullSec things in, in general. Maybe they're too new for that. Maybe they, they're looking at NullSec as something in the future, uh, but not for now. Uh, you, you throw around a turn, like you say you're the Delta candidate, uh, Delta, Delta Fleet or Delta SIG, um, you know, and that's even more of a niche. So like now it's, well, you're an Imperium candidate, so if you're not Imperium, you're not going to vote for you. You're the Delta candidate, like, wh- so why don't we why don't we pull it apart and say what is Delta Squad? What do you guys do enough that we can understand like what kind of activity and play style will you advocate for for everyone? Absolutely. So Delta Squad is uh, one of the squads. It's it's revived from the old Goon Swarm Squad system. Uh, it was revived by some returning veterans. Uh, in 2020 and they really have a handful of core interests and those interests are you know post no not posting is one of our mantras uh belief you know no not believing and then you know don't reveal the delta squad secret obviously um and as far as what we do in game the the biggest thing is we tend to fly cheaper low skill requirement ships in smaller fleets supporting main fleet honestly stealing the show sometimes and we play it with a kind of uh no serious business attitude we're not going to get angry about losing ships we're here to whelp ships if if i'm docking back up in my ship i feel disappointed in myself so that that uh Like high risk, only undock what you're willing to lose attitude is definitely a a big part of playing in Delta Squad. Um, And then just doing fun things, having having fun. Uh, The other day we had a uh, Badger 
race, like a, the Delta Grand Prix, was a Badger race through hostile space in Delve from Delve to Aquarius. And we were all just, you know, hoping to make it alive, but really, like, the goal was to not make it alive. When, when you're piloting a Badger through Delve, it's not a, it's not safe for anybody right now. Yeah, I don't know um, if you've noticed, but there's a war going on. Yeah, I've heard something about that. Yeah. Uh, but like, for instance, Delta Squad, for the initial phase of the war, we were deployed to Quirius. Um, we were having small fights with Brave. And, and by small fights, I'm meaning, you know, at most, maybe 200 players. Um, and so our PvP focus tends to be smaller fleets. Uh, like my ideal fleet size, I was saying on the uh, CCP interview to Elise, I was telling him, you know, my ideal fleet size is about 50 players. Somewhere between uh, like a a viable block fleet and a small gang is where I'm comfortable. I love small gang PvP. I'm not great at it, um, unfortunately. I wish I was better. But that's the kind of stuff that we love to do. And we'll break up uh, during what we call Delta After Dark into groups of like five or ten people who just go and clown around and, and you know, you maybe camp a gate, get your camp broken up, come back later... Uh, just have fun enjoy the game and uh, above all else you know post in a way tell the story of your experience in a way that's fun and fun for you and funny to other people to read and it makes them want to jump in and get engaged and play the game as well so we've been kind of like an infusion of new blood uh, for Goon Waffa in particular but I think for the Imperium as a whole uh, just kind of like this revitalizing attitude of how you should approach eve online like everyone loves to fly around in like a blingy five billion-esque ship and then they feel really bad when they lose it we're we're eschewing that we're saying no 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 no, no. what you want to do is you want to fly around with your friends you want to be a social group you want to have you want to know each other you want you don't want to be one of 256 players in a fleet you want to know the people that you're flying with know what they do know how they want to play play with them and, and work together because you guys share values and you share play styles and you think the same things are fun. Okay, so um, first of all, one of the things I really like about the Imperium uh, is uh, more than a lot of other uh, block groups, I believe, they promote branching out and trying other things and doing, you know, forming these SIGs uh, that go and, you know, hit other aspects of games or of the game then uh, maybe the main bulk is is working on. So to that end, it's really cool. And so it sounds like your SIG is more about like that small, bringing back that small gang play in this environment. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, okay. because for a lot of us, um, like myself, I was the overwhelming majority of my EVE career, I was not in the Imperium. I wasn't interested right. in like null block warfare and stuff like that i was interested in like small gang stuff and having fun so so to that end we have so we have a lot of small gang uh a lot of people seeking small gang representation now they said you know there's the concern about like the blocks are going to get their votes um i'm not sure where if you are on the block or or where you're at in that uh you can tell me if you would like but but for those of us who are like on the outside looking to for to place our votes yeah, I agree. We like a small gang candidate is something that is valuable. Why would we want the Imperium's small game candidate as opposed to like uh, a faction warfare pilot or a pirate or something like that? Because the it's I'm I'm going to do my best to not sound like a bit of a, you know, uh am I allowed to swear? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm I'm gonna try not to sound like an ass here. Oh, that's um, barely even swearing. But basically, what what we what we want to see, and what I want to see is, you know, these cultural monoliths of the null blocks, changing their attitude, and becoming more like the small gang blocks. And I want to see mechanics implemented in the game that let smaller groups of players and smaller alliances fight wars and defend themselves from these huge blobs much more effectively. And in order to, you know, create that cultural tone and work with CCP to develop mechanics that are very realistic, very reasonable to implement, that would emphasize that, 
you need a candidate who has the experience of being a big block player and who's broken out, done small group things, and someone who has effectively worked as part of a group within a big block to say, no, 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 we have a fleet of 50 people. We're going to go out. We're going to have a great time. Where it's it, We want to call it a slosh up. It's a slosh up. Whatever, whatever you, you want to use to describe it, we want to have that small gang attitude in the big blocks because if you can affect that change, then everyone's experience within the game is going to improve because, and I, I think I speak for a lot of Poppy and Imperium pilots when I say M2 was great sitting there for eight hours in tie-dye just until my eyes were bleeding watching my rock on approach to some Nyx that was 500 kilometers away. That was not a lot of fun. I have way more fun just going out with my friends and thrashing, you know? Right. Uh, so here you say that you, you are the proud author of the Abyssal Isk Printer Go Burr Definitive Goon Guide to Abyssal Dead Space. Now, I really, really like Abyssal Dead Space, not just as an Isk generation system, but as a way to learn the game and a way, and I believe that, you know, people should, uh, once you've mastered the Abyss, use it as an opportunity to practice. I, I say use it for like your drills or your scales to practice basic piloting in order to, uh, while you're, while you're making money. Um, the, the issue I've talked about this with several other candidates, which is like a lot of the times when it comes to making Eve more interesting, CCP can make changes like introducing content like the Abyss or like events or whatnot. And then if we just like cheese it out, yeah, sure, we can make we could basically cheat all of the excitement out of it uh, and and render it potentially moot. But a, that's not the, actually the best way to fly the abyss in uh, just to make money. But also, it it undermines the real value of doing it. And so, like, I've asked a lot of CSM members about like how are we going to better communicate to people how to get the most out of this stuff. And I'm concerned that you're that you actually are teaching people to look at things only as like resource extraction systems. And, and, and my concern would be that like, if, if that's how the abyss gets evaluated, then that will go run counter to the effort of making PVE more engaging. So can you, can you maybe reassure me a little bit about your feelings about the abyss? Absolutely. So um, as anyone who's read the guide can tell you, if you think that it's just a means for like generating easy cash or something like that, that's not what it's about. Um, I've actually been working with some people. Um, we're going to have a public facing version of the guide on the campaign website um, because people do really enjoy it. It is uh, a genuinely hilarious guide to the things that you will encounter in the abyss. And it breaks things down in a way that are very difficult uh, to kind of collate and put together normally. Um, things where like you might have to watch, you know, like a month of Torvald's amazing stream or like Erschlag out there streaming before you would pick up on little details and, and sort of how things balance out. And it emphasizes the skill set that you have to build things like manual piloting things like being aware of your drones things like oh god there are weather effects and sometimes i need to lean, lean into them and sometimes i need to not sometimes it's a bit of a trap you right. know um and okay so cool so it sounds like we're on the same page more or less on on this sort of stuff then definitely and if anything i think that um abyssal mechanics and effects are awesome and should probably be expanded um, one of my uh, uh, kind of big pivotal points is I would like to see things like the uh, liminal storms and and weather and unique effects in space broken out into regions. I would like to see that happen. I, I've said that regional and constellation bonuses, especially like if you that only apply if you own all of it as a way of making it so people will want to take certain areas and maybe not expand into other areas right away or whatever, or even limit how far you can expand uh, as a single organization, but then put big bonuses to that to make the choice more than just collecting things are all really cool ideas. Um, but going back to the, uh, the Abyss and the PVE and all that sort of stuff, one of my concerns has always been that since the Abyss doesn't contribute to ADMs, the Abyss doesn't contribute to taxes, um, this has caused the null blocks to either not support or even outright discourage 
uh, embracing these kinds of things as opposed to just ratting or mining, which is more like for the collective. Uh, being a person that has looked at this stuff as a member of a larger organization, how do you feel the relationship between these activities and the pressures on leadership to make people do particular activities over others? So um, in the, in the context of the Imperium, it's not really an, an issue. Um, when, as a matter of fact, as soon as I wrote the guide, uh, I did it just for um, some friends of mine and I, and we thought it would be like a funny post and it just kind of kept expanding and expanding from there. The minute I pushed it out, uh, people were ecstatic and the response was that it was going to be pinned in our economics forum and in our PVE forum and like we were going to shunt people to this like if you're interested in the abyss this is a great tool for you to use this is an intro it outlines things you can do things that you should try things that are just hilarious and like the common pitfalls uh, because I <laughs> did like 500 abyssal sites not including the ones I was doing on CC um, and so all of that data j uh, just fed into this guide and, and the Imperium response was very positive. That being said, to your point, I've had conversations with people, um, outside of the Imperium and they have been, you know, discouraged from engaging in this content because it doesn't generate, you know, the revenue that their smaller alliances need. Like for, for us. If everyone chooses to do this to PVE, well, 1DQ has a big enough marketplace that we're still going to get tax value from things that are sold there. And then, you know, we're not dependent upon, you know, everyone being out ratting in a carrier or a super 24-7, but other alliances are. Um, and it's it's just really upsetting to see people discouraging their own line members from engaging in content that I think is amazing. Like the abyss is one of the best things that CCP has ever done in my opinion. And, and hearing that people are discouraged from doing that is, is really heartbreaking and upsetting. And I think speaks to uh, more of an ideological or cultural problem that we need to address rather than something that's mechanical in the game. Like, I don't think we should start being able to tax abyssal sites or something like that. Right. So, um, you are, uh, an Imperium candidate. We've done the co cover that quite a bit. Uh, let's, let's just assume that the Imperium are going to get like their two or three slots in like they normally do. I guess I'll just ask, uh, do you believe that you're going to be one of those, like the main Imperium guys getting in or are you not like, are you still having to prove yourself as it were? I, so I don't think I have to prove myself. Um, there are definitely a lot of people in the Imperium who are diehard fans and they're putting a lot of effort into my campaign alongside me and I appreciate all of them from the bottom of my heart. But, and they'll be the first ones to tell you, I don't, even even as an Imperium candidate, so to speak, like there's no uh, specific on-brand loyalty to the Imperium when it comes to the CSM. So... I see a lot of like null block players, you know, dragging their feet when it comes to addressing problems with like supers and Titans and things like that. I don't share that, uh, idea. I don't share that opinion. I'm very frank. I've been, uh, kind of a huge critic of our own leadership and administration throughout the war, um, to the effect of some of my something awful posts, uh, getting reposted on Reddit and, and people screeching, look, goons are fracturing. And it's like, no, I'm just, an honest critic of like our leadership. I don't think that they're perfect and I can't drink the Kool-Aid. Sorry. Um, so as far as like being on the CSM, there is no, no uh, line member ideology there or anything like that. Right. Um, it's, it's about the state of the game and the state of the game right now is we're close to achieving something that could be really awesome but we need to not make missteps and honestly listening to null block players right now would be a mistake for the CSM. Okay. So, but knowing all of that, like, and also assuming that 
and again, no, the Imperium are getting their guys in. What do you, what would be missing if you're not elected in? Like, what do you bring on top of just the, you know, the Imperium's objectives and uh, will be put forward, or at least the Imperium's perspectives will be put forward in a lot of these uh, affairs. And, and these people are very knowledgeable, capable people as well. So like, what, what would be missing if you're not also on the CSM? Oh, I, I think you'd be missing a voice because, I mean, obviously the CSM, uh, CCP takes into account where these players come from and, and you know, who they are and who they represent and everything. What you're missing is a voice that has a massive amount of resources. So, like, I have a lot of people in Imperium who are great people. They're great at number crunching. They're always telling me things or showing me things that I didn't know about this game. I've been playing it for 14 years and I still feel like I barely understand half of it, you know? So I have access to those resources, which is really, it's powerful and it's deeply informative, but at the same time, there's an emphasis on, sorry, I'm just, uh, my girlfriend just brought me a chai tea. I'm very happy now. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but, but what you're missing is someone who's definitely an outside-of-the-box thinker and someone who wants to see a shift in null blocks and these large alliances, you know, and wants to see them change. Like, one of my most controversial opinions, and I'll stand by it throughout the entire campaign, is I think that the fleets should be capped at about 50 to 70 players. You know, I, I think if you want to field 5,000 players in a fight, it should be a logistical nightmare for your organization. If you are going to bog down the server and break the game for people halfway on the other side of the galaxy, like they're just not able to jump because you've packed so many nerds into a system that the server is just sweating. It's just like it's on the verge of meltdown. It's going Chernobyl. That should be a logistical nightmare for you. You should have to coordinate across 500 FCs, and you should have to expand your ranks of people that you give uh, power to and that you delegate authority to, and that every organization should be uh, more flexible and, and be able to break down into groups kind of like Delta Squad so that, you know, when someone says we want to go fight goons, it's not, oh God, we're kicking an entire hornet's nest and it's we're fighting 500 titans all at once and we have to deal with all of this crap. No, you can, you can fight a group that is more likely at your level uh, in terms of size, in terms of skill, in terms of capacity. And then it's about how do you play, which one of you is more dedicated and who is more creative in their approach to the game? That's the sort of stuff that I think should be rewarded. And so if I'm not there on the CSM, I do feel like the null blocks are just going to do more of the same. Like there's what? no missing the fact that null block advocacy has helped CCP build a game where Helldunk, and, or, Helldunk or Blue Balls is the official ideology of everyone in the galaxy. Uh, so... But on the same time, what do you say to all those people that are quick to point out that or argue that the big battles are, are the thing that gets Eve, you know, uh, into the news? And this is how we get players into the game. And this is the, the top end stuff. And therefore, any anything that gets in the way of these big, big battles and making them harder and therefore less likely to happen and less common would be bad. What would you say to them? So let's imagine that I'm a new player and that I clicked on like some Polygon article in January and they were talking about M2, the huge fight in M2. It was an amazing fight and look at all these people and there it was a devastating defeat for Poppy and a huge glorious victory for the Imperium or however you want to spin it. Let's say I read that article and for some reason I was like, all right, yeah, I'm going to go get my PhD in EVE Online and play this game. Do you honestly think I'm still playing six months later if what got me into the game was the idea of a massive fleet fight of 5,000 players? Am I still playing in six months, or did I give up after two weeks? Right. I'm glad that you pointed that out. So this is something that uh, I talked to CCP about this back in like 2015, 2016 era, when they were first talking about making changes. One of the big reasons why was because B of BTAC R. BTAC R brought in a huge amount of attention to EVE Online. 
but was actually horrible for retention because all these people come into the game seeing this big thing and then the game itself is a totally different game so they're not actually they it it just becomes this giant engine to turn potential players into x players or or disappointed players and so that's that is that is a true danger of that effect but but how would we continue to capture you know the public consciousness how do we how do we fix the problem uh, how do we get into the how do we teach people that eve is not just about big block uh, giant war i th i think a big part is um, and I think CCP has wrestled with trying to push the best aspect of Eve, which is the social aspect. You know, there are very few players and, and they exist and they have valid opinions, but there are very few players who are out there doing everything solo. Even if you are like a big solo PVP person, you typically are you, like maybe you're a streamer and you have a bunch of followers and you like to talk shop about Eve. But at the end of the day, it's a social game. And I think CCP wrestles with how to sell that. And that's fair. It's difficult to sell a social experience that is so wild compared to what most people are used to, especially in a video game. Um, but I think if we created more baseline engaging gameplay, you know, for instance, like Abyssals, um, for instance, greater differentiation of sites in different regions and stuff like that. If we had much more engagement with PVE and with industry, like people forget that industry is like actually a really involved, complicated thing. And you have games that are successful now, like Factorio and Satisfactory, that maybe they scratch a few different itch itches, but a lot of the players that are invested in that are doing so because they like balancing production lines and they like dealing with these complicated math problems. People like spreadsheets. I might not be one of them. Maybe I am. But there are people out there who want that experience. And I feel like CCP is just focusing entirely too much on these big fleet battles and not leveraging some of the really engaging gameplay that we do have. And they're not paying it enough attention to really make it shine and to be able to stand out and come to the forefront and attract new players when they really should. And I think leveraging that would be the smart move. You have a thing that uh, was like the thing that made you run, right? Like, like what, what was the moment maybe per preferably in the last year that made you go like, Nope, I, I'm, I need to run for the CSM. I need to get my passport together. I need to, start figuring out how to get on podcasts i'm going to run for the csm what was it that that pushed you over the edge there um there were there were definitely a few of them uh my i mean my big inspiration the thing that finally pushed me over the edge officially was um my social group delta squad saying hey you know you should do it you should run for csm because you know even though i try to be funny and i try to post uh things very tongue-in-cheek like i am fairly fair in in criticism i tend to be fairly thoughtful that just comes from like real life stuff i think um but as far as gameplay issues the lack of emphasis on the abyss um as far as attracting new players was just, it was mind-boggling to me because as a bunch of people were coming back for the war i i pushed out our guide and I was telling people, try the Abyss. It's amazing. It's the most engaging PvE content that we've ever had in this game. You need to get in there. I really don't know why CCP isn't pushing this harder. And then hearing from developers and current CSM members that they're not going to tell us what the end state of scarcity is going to look like. And I understand some things they want to they want to keep close to the vest so that people don't manipulate the market and stuff. But you've got a bunch of people who's like their their entire game gameplay has been ruined by scarcity or just made so awful and tedious by scarcity that they're not interested. They don't want to engage with it anymore. And the lack of communication there wasn't acceptable because when I was a much more active player, um, you know, five or six years ago when I was really invested and involved there was a greater level of communication from the CSM and that seems to have gone out the window somehow. And I wanted to bring it back. And, you know, it's a bit of a joke that Delta squad emphasizes posting. And I say like one of my jobs as a CSM rep is going to be posting, but it is 
like it's going to be communicating every single thing that I can communicate outside the scope of that NDA where I'm not going to get, you know, <laughs> removed from the CSM. I want to communicate and I want to hear from people. I, I don't care what side you're on. I, uh, for instance, you've got my website up now. Mm-hmm. I have my personal discord on there. I have the campaign email and I've talked to a lot. I've talked to dozens of people so far and it's been amazing just to hear their ideas, to hear what they want to put forward. And these are all things that should be supported. And, and, you know, their, their current CSM reps should be accountable. Like there's no reason if you voted for someone for CSM and you're not able to get on their discord tomorrow and say, how about that idea? You know, I messaged to you six months ago. Did you ever bounce that off CCP? What was the feedback? If they're not able to answer that question at all, or if their answer is, oh, I forgot, then there's a problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, but let, help me, help me bring this home, I guess, uh, a little bit. You're saying you're talking to all these people. Can you give me, uh, an example of someone that maybe outside of what would be seen as the traditional Imperium voice has reached out to you? Uh, yeah, well, actually, uh, I was on a stream for McWolf, who's a new player, uh, I think it was early last week, and Three Foot Ninja, who is primarily a high sec player. He's uh, very invested in mining and industry play styles. We had an at length conversation about what I could do for him and how he could hold me accountable. What are the changes he wants to see made? You know, what did he think about? you know, the reallocation of mineral resources. And he thinks that that's great, but there is not enough. And I think we can all agree, not enough engaging gameplay about mining, which is why we have a bit of a bot problem. And, you know, there are changes that could be made to site spawns for minerals and things like that, that he wants to see. And they were great ideas. And there's no reason that someone shouldn't be bringing them to the CSM. There's no reason that CCP shouldn't be made to sit down and hear those ideas. And then you get enough people repeating that chorus and eventually it's a fulcrum that moves this monolith, maybe slowly, maybe, you know, slower than we'd like, but it does move. Oh God, I'm going to have to show the, uh, the message from Delta Squad video by the end of this, aren't I? Yep. Okay. Just checking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that I mean, that is a good point, and I appreciate you get, being able to give that example uh, off the top of your head. It is, I, again, and this is something I've talked to you about with a lot of these candidates. By coming on the show, it shows to me that you are at least trying to reach out to the people outside of your your, I guess, bubble block, whatever you want to call it. And so that's really what I'm trying to do is like help pull apart that. That's why I was asking questions like that. Um, so you do have a very amazing website that's extensive and has lots of really good information. Uh, I assume I can play the uh, the Kenny G one without causing any issues. Copyright or anything? Absolutely. Okay. I, would, I would be honored if you would do that. All right. Uh, we'll definitely play that in just a second, but I want to make sure to give you as much of your time as we can uh, and think about this a little bit. So the, the PVE issue, um, like you, you really like the abyss. I like the abyss. We see it as valuable. The events have, have, uh, and the abyss, sorry, invasion saw new AI with new encounters and new effects. The player base, I still hear things like non-consensual PVE and, and that they just want to do PvP. You say that, like, your Delta Squad sounds like it's mostly PvP. So I would assume that you'd be part of that, like, PvP PvP is PvP, and that's the point of the game, and PvE is just there to basically be a, a cost, and annoyance that we have to deal with in order to get to our PvP. That doesn't seem to be the way that you feel. So so what do you, what do you feel about the relationship between PvP and PvE and EVE Online? Oh, I mean, they're they're totally symbiotic, um, and I enjoy both of them, and and I think most of Delta Squad does. I I think where your stereotypical, and I, you know, I hate stereotyping, but they're stereotypes for a reason. Most of your stereotypical resistance to PVE comes from the fact that the content was like really repetitive and boring, and when you get people excited about things like the Abyss, it's because 
no two runs are the same. Yeah. I have run the abyss so many times, and I have never been in the same situation twice. Everything is crazy and unique, and it's just like a PvP scenario in that way. And so I think actually what people want is to kind of go back to you know, one of CCP's old ads, it's a question of, do you want emergent gameplay or do you want to follow this set formula over and over again for hours and just watch your wallet balance tick up? Right. And, and I think that we have, we came to accept that PVE was predictable. And then we came to ex expect that PVE was predictable. And I think it's going to take a little bit to break people out of that idea. But with things like, Drifter attacks, you know, like I said, the, the non-consensual PVE thing, like it, it keeps cropping up. What do you say to uh, gates, uh, rats on gates, disrupting, roaming around? You're a small game gang guy. Like where, where is the limits? Where, how does PVE uh, encroach upon the universe as a whole? Or is it supposed to stay in its little box? Not at all. I think it should encroach. I think it should encroach more, honestly. Um you know, I've never been bubbled by, you know, a Blood Raider. And if Blood Raiders start bubbling me, I'm going to be stoked. Like, it, and that might sound insane to some people, but the fact of the matter is, like, there's, whether you choose to shoot at other people or you choose to shoot at rats, like, this this is the core gameplay. Like, it's, it's shooting, it's dealing with these things. Like, even industrialists, uh, you know, because I remember back when I started... Occasionally you'd have like the belt rats spawn, but generally they were like not a nuisance. And now I think I went on a mining op a few months ago, just my first one, kind of to see what it was like. Mm -hmm. And and like not only did rats spawn, they started shooting my drones. I was astonished. I was like, yeah. whoa, okay, this is new. And that's good. I think that that sort of thing should happen more often. And so when people say non-consensual PVE, I'm sorry, but... You know, it's the shape of Eve and it's what we all have to deal with. And if all you want to do is PvP, well, your PvP ship should be able to shoot a rat. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you. Right. So so you would say that you're you're on in favor of the change that added the uh, belt rats to gates that makes roaming around spookier? I am, uh, largely. Uh, I don't know if that was the gr the greatest mechanism for uh, you know doing officer spawns. It was sort of a um, series of of accidents or or half measures for sure. Yeah, like I I got the feeling that that was them uh, CCP basically saying whoops, and it, that was a little funny to me because I'm like, shouldn't the CSM have maybe called that out ahead of time? Maybe not. I don't know. Um, but that kind of change, I'm genuinely actually uh, like happy about. Uh, we had we had an issue where we were when we were on deployment. This is as a PvP group in Quirius. We still had to do PVE to keep our ADM up in the Keepstar system that we had. And you know, oops, we have faction dread spawns. Right. You know, we have uh, so we've we've got to do something about this. Now we have people undocking in their PvP fit carriers to go kill this dread because it's a problem we all have to solve together. Right, exactly. And I I've always thought that that should be the way it's dealt with, right? Like the idea that the universe wouldn't also present their own challenges and that the inhabitants wouldn't like try to do to be in your way. They, they that everything should just stay in its little compartment. I've even said, like, uh, with when it comes to the Triglavians, it's like, well, they're doing that because they they don't they're not they're not there to be your PVE. They're there to to achieve their objectives, and you're interrupting their objectives, and so they're going to be based on that. And people are like, I don't want a lore explanation. It's like, dude, you live in a universe, man. Get used to it. So it's 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 refreshing to hear that. Uh, it makes me very happy to hear that you're a voice within the Imperium. And I agree that that is a voice that we absolutely need to have on the CSM because, yeah, it's, it's, it is too often for the player base to just miss what CCP is doing. They can't figure out how to get it across. And when we have a CSM that simply maintains institutional knowledge and never really wrestles with this stuff, then that's how we get a year of events where, like, the mechanics of rats have all changed and we still have people saying 
that you can't newt rats, that you can't do these things, like just straight up wrong information, um, you know, because they think they know better. And so we need people who are not only digging into that stuff, but but speaking in a weird way, truth to power to these null blocks and saying, hey, guys, the abyss is awesome. Uh, there's things going on with this universe. And rather than just getting mad that the drifters have, have ruined your day, we can realize that this this is reflectant on something much, much bigger and more and maybe even more important, or at least uh, on a grander time scale, if nothing else, than anything else that we're doing. So I, I'm really encouraged by that. And I hope that if nothing else, you you keep down that particular road within the Imperium, CSM, wherever you end up. Thanks. I appreciate that. And that's, um, I think someone in chat is not happy with me, but, and I've said this before, so I'm just going to say it again. Uh, cause I think it's funny. If I woke up tomorrow to a bunch of pings and people were like, Hey, uh, 600 drifters spawned in one DQ and they killed three of our keep stars and half of our super fleet. I would laugh and say that that's awesome. Like I, it is. It's yeah, you. I want the universe to be interacting with us, and if the universe goes against us, well, that was the roll of the dice. So, yeah. In, in in particular with the drifter one, I remember people were like, "But you don't understand, Ash. They these are bot. These are AI. So they can't. They they attack all the time. They never stop. They never sleep." And I'm like, "Yeah, they're drifters. They're AI. They never attack. They never fight. They never sleep. Like that's one of the things I really like about what CCP has actually done, which is that there's so many levels in which like the the triglavians are red triangles who seek to make us prove ourselves by giving us challenges this is true from both an in-game and an out-of-game perspective this is true from an in-universe role and an out-of-universe game design perspective same with the drifters and so i think that that's something that uh really needs to be respected more by the player base and so like like i said anytime i see somebody who comes in here and says i am part of a big block representing like the 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 man the delta squad uh you know candidate and that you are focused on pve and then we end up with the pve is really really important and i think that we need to focus on that and like have that be something that makes that is the secret to making eve great you know i that's that shows a depth of understanding uh that i hope that we start to see more and more of so do i because, I mean, it's, I think people have gotten used to, you know, we're in the sandbox and who's the scary kid in the sandbox. And I think that that's worked in the past, but it doesn't need to stay that way. And maybe there should be things in the sandbox that are scarier than goons, that are scarier than Pandemic Legion or Horde or Test or Frat. Maybe there should be things that terrify the shit out of all of us. And... Uh, the drifters very much are set up to be that thing, as it says in Templar One. The uh, the sleepers were their was the other's first victim, and we will be their next. So hopefully, we don't spend so much time worrying about our own personal wars that we we miss out on the the White Walkers that are that are growing in um, among our midst. Uh, all right, well, this has been a really cool interview. Uh, I, I I may have actually I thought I gave you a ten minute warning, but let's call it now. Or just if there's anything else that you want to cover, talk about or uh, dig into before we're done? Uh, well, obviously, I want to pl plug my uh, CSM uh, website, knownotbelieve.in. Um, we are updating the platform because I have had a lot of feedback from people outside of the Imperium. A lot of Russian players, I used to fly with a English and Russian-speaking alliance. Um, and uh, a lot of Russian players that I used to play with have actually messaged me, and they've got some really great ideas. Um, and I am open to hearing everyone out. Uh, so I, I want to make sure that if you feel like you want to talk to me, you know, go ahead, do it. Because the worst case scenario is you like send me a goat say, and then I laugh and and have to block you, which sucks. But you know, but uh, you know, I want to be available to everyone because. I think we are at a really crucial juncture for EVE, where it's currently the only space game that is 
first of all, actually a game, and second of all, not currently imploding, uh, like Elite Dangerous, for instance. And I think a big part of that is the community's level of involvement with the developers and in creating content ourselves. Um, I want to see community members empowered uh, to do community events and, and player-driven events and, and see that supported materially by CCP. So maybe CCP in, in involving themselves in creating rat spawns or things like that for certain events for players. Um, I, I feel like if the relationship is one where more communication is emphasized and both parties appreciate each other, then we can genuinely make this sandbox an interesting and awesome and terrifying experience for everyone. Compelling argument. I will, uh, I will put on, I, I will close this out with the, uh, the ins inspired words of Kenny G. How about that? Sounds good to me. Thank you so much. Let me put this on. Hey everyone, Kenny G here with a friendly reminder from Delta Squad that CSM elections are coming up. And here's a special message to all the Pappy pilots out there. Delta Squad wants to have sex with you. I'm pretty sure that's where I come in. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this song. That is uh, very cool. And while there have been a lot of those, or like there have been some cameos made this this year, quite a few, uh, it's probably been a pretty good year to do those kinds of things thanks to uh, you know, no conventions and stuff. But I believe that you were, if not the first, you definitely uh, took, the, took, took it to another level by getting Kenny G. Other people took inspiration from you. Uh, what... Before we wrap this up, I guess, tell me a little bit about how that happened. Uh, yeah, so we, um, one of our doctrines is what we call Saks Fleet. It's tornadoes, you know, warping around. Um, but they look like saxophones, so we've been calling it Saks Fleet. And some of us took to playing a Particularly Careless Whisper by George Michael uh, while we were saxing. And um, someone just mentioned to me, I think it was Dal Moody mentioned that Kenny G was on cameo and that like, you know, lightning in a bottle. I was like, Oh, well I've got to get him. And then brisk, uh, very brilliantly went and got Napoleon dynamite. And so we do have another campaign video coming out this week with three, uh, celebrity cameos, uh, talking about the election. Uh, Kenny does not endorse any particular candidate. He does endorse Delta squad. Uh, but he just wants people to vote. And I think that everything would get, uh, a lot better for us all and Eve if more people voted. You know, it doesn't just have to be null block horse trading. Everyone can vote. That is a that is a great uh, that's a great sentiment to to wrap things up on. Absolutely, as I said at the very beginning, like the CSM. The, one of the reasons why I do all of this is because I believe that the CSM is incredibly important. Some people disagree, and the issue is is that like if we are cynical about it. If we don't engage with it and only cynical people get on the CSM because cynical people vote, then yeah, we, we get an ineffective, crappy CSM that's just confrontational with CCP, doesn't get anything done, and we get what we pay for. But if we focus and vote and care, then we get representatives that care, and that's got to be better than not. You know, it may not be the the whole of the answer. Some CSMs are more effective than others, but the better the candidates we send over there, the better that they can work with CCP and the better that CCP can work with them. Thank you for Absolute. coming. Sorry. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a real pleasure. And uh, I hope I hope we get to talk again, even after the uh, CSM, because uh, I think we share a lot of perspectives on uh, PVE development in the game. And um, again, like my website, No Not Believe In, anyone in chat who wants to message me, feel free. Um, but thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. And thank you for coming on. Uh, and yeah, absolutely. I want you to come on uh, the show. Obviously, we put Eve into context for my fellow Empyreans here. So, uh, you know, I'm sure that there are plenty of things that you'd like to come on and help. And we can talk about it and help people unlock maybe a deeper level to things. Because sometimes CCP likes to just put things out. It takes people like you, people like me, to break it down, digest it, and then present to other people. So that's really exciting. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Take care. And, and I love your stream. I love your show. You're doing a great service to our community. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I will keep it up. 07. 07.